Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial of Java practice. In this tutorial I will like, explain to you how to download and install JDK for the Solaris machines. Right now I am running Open Solaris on uh, Ubuntu in a virtual box. Uh, the installation for you will not be different, it will be exactly the same. And uh, to <coughs> download and install the JDK, first of all we need the JDK. To do that go to this website and the link is provided in the description box below and just click accept license agreement and download the Solaris version of the JDK now which version of the Solaris JDK you will download will depend on whether you are on a Spark machine or whether you are on a 32-bit or a 64-bit machine uh, if you don't know this I suggest that first you get to know this and then download accordingly now <coughs> I'm on a 32-bit machine and uh, I will download this version because it will for the Intel uh, chip and also I'm going to download the TAR or GZ version. Um, so uh, as you can see, I have already downloaded it and uh, let's uh, bring up the command line window and uh, let's copy this file to my home directory. So. my name or you can just do this rather than doing it that long uh, slash desktop jdk to the current directory press enter and we copy and then we need to extract this file to do that use the tar command tar dash xvzf and then the name of the file press enter and this will get extracted into its very own directory called the jdk 1.7.0-03 um, extracting extracting and uh, there we go so now <coughs> uh, let's let's move into this folder As you can see, there are many files and folders over here, but we are particularly interested in the bin folder. So we'll go into that. And as you can see that there are many more files. Now these files are each executable programs which have uh, different purposes to them, but we are very much interested in the Java and the Java C command because these are the two commands that we need extensively and uh, the Java C is the compiler and the Java is the runtime environment as you would remember that we need to uh, to run a Java program we need to compile the Java source file or the programs written in Java and then we need to run the bytecode that is generated by the compilation process on the Java virtual machine so this command will uh, generate the bytecode and this command will run that bytecode so if I run this from this directory by doing this, of course I can run it, but uh, I need this to be available to me from anywhere. So even if I'm on my home, I should be able to, I mean if I'm on my home directory, I should be able to call the Java C command. So if we call Java C from here, it says command not found. Now what we need to do is edit a particular file for this to take place. Now, before we go into editing the file, I will need to tell you what a path variable is. A path variable is nothing more than just a bunch of addresses to folders on your system. Here it is. See? Each colon separates one address from the other. So, slash user gnu bin is one address and then user bin is another address and user x11 bin is another address and what these addresses are basically is that when you will type a command for example let's say java it will go and look in each of these directories to find out whether uh, this command is described in any one of them and if it finds it it will run it <coughs> um, so where is this path variable because the, our Java and Java C are in the bin folder, right? 
which is in the JDK folder, which is under our home folder. So we need to just add another entry over here that says, well, this. So to edit this variable, we need to open up a file called dot profile. And uh, to open it up, just type this, gedit, or any editor that you have, you want to invoke. Um, well, we are in the home folder right now, so it's just dot profile, enter, and soon enough, we will see, yeah, there we go. This is gedit, and there are many different things over here, but there is one line in particular, it's the export path. Now, as you can see, it has many entries and do not change or modify any of these. All you need to do is go to the end um, and uh, just if there is a colon there, that's okay. But if it is not, just put a colon there. And then you need to copy this, the location of your, um, sorry, the location of your bin folder in your Java directory and paste it here. save it and uh, just close this now technically all these commands that are written over here should be available to us over here so let's check that and it still says command not found well that's because we need to restart our system because the dot profile file gets executed only once when the system is booted and it remains for the entire session so let me just reboot our system. I'm just going to do it quickly. Reboot. And now we have restarted our system. So let's launch the command line again. And let's check whether we can invoke the Java C command. And uh, there we go. This long output means that we can actually invoke it but to really check if it is working let's check the version which will tell us that the, com the program is installed on our system and also if it is the correct version or not and as you can see it is the latest version 1.7.0-03 now let's check for the java command Well, we seem to have a problem. The Java C command is the latest, but the Java version, the Java command, seems to be one version behind it. And uh, why this is happening is because, well, let me first show you the path variable again. As you can see, that we have appended the location of our bin folder to the end of the path uh, variable but here's what's happening now the command line searches each of these directories serially so it will search this first and then it will search this and then search this and search this and solaris at least open solaris in my knowledge comes shipped with a, J a java runtime environment and that java runtime environment is well the old version as you can see and it is within one of these folders the, all these folders that are before the folder that we had specified the JDK 1.7 folder that we had specified it is in one of the folders before that uh, I came to that conclusion because if it was not then we would have the latest version so we need to search each of these folders and locate where exactly is the Java command hiding so um, in my case I found it over here let me just show you we have to go to the user bin directory so we'll go to the file system and then we go to navigate to user and then we'll go to the bin directory and let me show you as you can see we have something called Java but it is not the actual program as you can see the arrow that is up there it shows that it's a link and now where the link leads us 
it leads us over here to the or uh, the Solaris uh, provided Java program so we don't want that and uh, we want this to point to our uh, to our newly created directory now <coughs> we could uh, we could also delete this link uh, but uh, I would suggest that you know we should keep this link because there is a very small command that will take care of our problem and that command is the ln command not the capital ln the small ln and the command is ln dash f dash s and in the first uh, there are two things that we need to specify again here two more things uh, first command is the program that we want to run and the second command is not the command uh, the it's called the argument now the first argument is the c program that we want to run and the second argument would be where we want to place the symbolic link uh, that uh, link that I showed you of Java with the arrow pointing upwards that's the symbolic link so uh, if we uh, do this command if we run this command uh, that symbolic link will get replaced by another symbolic link but it will not get replaced actually um, the path to where it is pointing will get changed to what we want so let's just specify the path right now and the path is um, jdk 1.7 bin slash java right this is what we want to run when we type the java command and where do we want to place the symbolic link again we want to place the symbolic link in user bin press enter and it says permission denied so what do we need to do for this we need to become the root <coughs> and now we can we should run this command and it should be taken care of now and see we have executed this command and let's check the version of Java and as you can see it's the latest version in my previous video I had shown you in my previous video of Fedora I had shown you that how to use the update alternatives command now I would have used the same procedure in this one as well but update alternatives is not present over here and I don't know by which name it goes but uh, this is the manual way to do what I did in the Fedora video so if you are having problems using the update alternatives command or are uh, a bit confused as to what exactly is going on this is how to do it completely manually so now we have the Java and the Java C command installed and we can run it from the command line and that's all we had to do so that's it for now thank you for viewing